from the primal solution, optimal solution, you can find your optimal dual variables by using one of these two methods. Okay, so the primal dual objective values for any pair of feasible primal and dual solutions, the objective value in the maximization problem is less than or equal to the objective value in the minimization problem. And that's always true. At the optimum, the relationship holds as a strict equation, meaning that the two objective functions are equal. So one of them are going to go this, this direction. So if you're maxim maximizing your problem, you will always find a better solution. So that means that your objective function will increase. Because if it's a better solution, it should increase. If you're minimizing, a better solution will decrease your solution or your objective function. So when you look at dual and the primal, depending on which one is maximizing and which one is minimizing, at some point they're going to be the same at the optimum. One will go from this side, the other one will go from the other side, but at the end they'll hold that at the optimal value the relationship is straight D. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the economic interpretation of, dual, of duality. So the LP problem can be viewed as a resource allocation model that seeks to maximize revenue under limited resources. And that's what we are usually doing when we are trying to solve these LP uh, problems. So we are trying to assign resources to maximize our revenue, but we always have some capacity limitations. So if we didn't have any cap uh, limitations, then you can assign as many resources as possible to get as much production as you need. But that's not the case, because you always have some limitations in terms of money, so you can only hire these many people, so that many people will give you certain production, and you need to find the best way to use those resources. Okay, so looking at the problem from this standpoint, the associated dual problem offers interesting economic interpretations of the resource allocation model. To formalize the discussion, let's consider the following representation of the primal and dual problem. So I guess, I mean, I assume that you're familiar with this notation, so this is the summation from J equals 1 to N. And what we are doing here is just representing the models as math using math. So you are maximizing the sum of the cost times your decision variables, and you have some restrictions where VI is basically your right hand side, A is the coefficients that are with your decision variables. And for the minimization problem, which is the dual, you are using y as our variables, and di corresponds to your right-hand side here. Right? So, for your primal, di will look will will be fine in your right-hand side. For the dual, it's going to be part of the coefficient in your objective function. Same thing here. Um, so, c c j, which is the cost in your primal will now be part of your right-hand side in your dual problem. Just going from the primal to the dual, dual to the primal. Okay, so view as a resource allocation model, the primal problem has N economic activities and N resources. Okay, so we have N activities, and N resources, meaning that you have a capacity limitation in your resources. The coefficient CJ in the primal represents the revenue per activity. So you know, remember the Toiko problem? You build, I don't know how many trucks you have a revenue of 100. That's what that means. So if you build 20, that means that you're going to make a revenue of 100 times 20. So that's CJ. The 
revenue that you're making in your production per unit of activity J. Resource I with availability B I is consumed at the rate of eight I J units per unit of activity J. So if you remember for the same problem, your constraints were X1, X2, and X3, and you have some coefficients. And then some capacity limitations here. So that constraint was telling you to produce a truck, you need six hours of activity one. So let's say each activity is a constraint. So you have 200 hours available, right? In product. One will consume six hours, product two will consume seven, and product three will consume nine for that particular activity. And you have this limitation. So that's basically what this is saying. Resource I, so this will be activity I, has with availability BI, so this coefficient is BI is consumed as a rate of AIJ. So this is AIJ. AIJ. Per unit of activity J. Okay, so you wanna set your schedule or your pollution production for each unit in the best way possible so you can use those 200 hours in the best way and maximize your profit. Okay, so resource I will availability VI is consumed at a rate of AIJ units per unit of activity J. The economic interpretation of dual variables for any two primal and dual feasible solutions, the value of the objective functions when finite must satisfy the following inequality. And using, again, going back to the same notation, Z equals the summation of J equals 1 up to N, CJ, XJ, must be less than or equal to the summation of I equals 1 up to M, B, I, Y, I, which is the dual objective function. So the dual objective function is basically the upper bound for the objective function of the primal. The objective function of the primal can never be greater than the objective function of the dual. In terms of the resource allocation model, Z represents revenue, and BI represents available units of resource I. Thus, dimensionally, Z equals W represents the following. So the revenue, the money, equals this. I equals 1 up to M. BI Y, I. So what we're saying is we know that this equals the revenue. We know that because this is the revenue they are making by selling each one of the units of each product. This is money. But this is not money. This is hours of capacity. But when we find the optimal solution, we know that Z will be equal to W. So this will be equal to D, this part. So we can say that the revenue will equal this as well. And we can define this in words. So that is the summation of I equals 1 up to M units of resource 
I times the dollars per unit of resource I. Which means the following, this, this means that the dual variable Y1 represents the work per unit of resource I. So if you know how much a unit of time of your resource is value, you can find the objective function value for the primal in terms of the revenue. Okay, so it's the same solution again, but the goal is going to give you a different perspective. This is going to tell you this is how much your a unit of time of your resource is value. So using that information, you can basically decide how you want to use your resources. Okay? So this is very important.